In this video lecture, I'll be introducing the idea of polar coordinates. So we're familiar with um, what we'll call rectangular coordinates, which are where I would um, describe the position of some point here by its distance horizontally from the origin. Say I would go over two units and maybe up three units here to get to my point, so I'd have this point two, three. Um, and the graph paper that we would work with would be a grid of vertical and horizontal lines. So we're going to now be introducing the idea of polar coordinates where our graph paper will look like this, where I have these different radial lines coming out from an origin as well as concentric circles. So we want to um, talk about how we're measuring um, locations of a point in this coordinate system. So the idea is that I'm going to fix my origin here at zero, okay? And then I'm going to talk about um, our points here having coordinates r comma theta, where r is our radial coordinate, okay, which is going to be a directed distance from the origin to our point p. So this is a directed distance. from the origin to our point P. Okay, so that's a radius out from the center that would lie on one of those concentric circles. And then I'm going to have this other coordinate theta, which is our angular coordinate. Okay, and it's in a directed angle measured um, in the counterclockwise direction from the x-axis. Okay, so I have this distance here is r, and I'm going to go some angle theta here from my um, x-axis. Okay, so this is the directed angle measured counterclockwise, because that's the positive direction for measuring angles, counterclockwise from the polar axis, which is corresponding also to our x-axis, okay, up to our point P. Okay, so I have this point now that has coordinates r theta, that's this distance r from the origin, and lying on a line that makes an angle theta um, with the x-axis. Okay, so we have this new system, polar coordinates. We'll call our x-y coordinate system rectangular coordinates, and we'll also call it Cartesian coordinates. Okay, just so when we're referring back to the previous system, we might use either one of those two names. Okay, so let's look at some examples where we actually plot some points in terms of polar coordinates. So I have a little sample of some polar graph paper here, and we want to plot the following polar coordinates. So the first coordinate is 0 comma theta. Remember the polar coordinates are this ordered pair r comma theta, so the first coordinate is giving you the, the um, radial distance, so like this circle here would be have an r value of 1, one unit away from the center, this next circle here would be at r equals 2. And the second coordinate theta is representing that angular piece, um, the angle that we're making with the positive x-axis. So if my radius here is 0, theta could really be anything, and that would still be my origin point. Okay, so this will be our blue point, this is actually the origin. Okay, and so you can imagine um, being at this origin here, I could just stick my pencil here and I could think about rotating my pencil really anywhere, but I'm not moving from that point. Okay, so 0 comma theta is um, the origin for any theta. So 0 comma pi is also the origin, 0 comma pi thirds is the origin, 0 comma any theta value will be the origin. So one thing that we already noticed right away is that polar coordinates do not give a unique representation you can have many coordinates that represent the same point in polar coordinates okay so what about this um, polar coordinate 2 comma 2 pi thirds so that's a let me use a different color here so we can look at where these different points are um, R here is 2 so it's going to lie on one of these circles that's distance 2 away from the origin and this angle of 2 pi thirds so let me put some labels on this this is the 
um, positive x-axis here at theta equals zero. The way this is, these are divided up is each one of these angles on this graph paper is pi twelfths. So this is pi twelfths. This is two pi twelfths or pi sixth. Three pi twelfths or pi fourths. This is five pi twelfths. Then I'd be at six pi twelfths. Um, or, um, let's see. I think I miscounted here. Pi twelfths, two pi twelfths. 3 pi 12s, 4 pi 12s, I missed 4 pi 12s, so that's where we're at pi thirds, then I'm at 5 pi 12s, and then 6 pi 12s here is pi over 2. Okay, so just to get an idea of how we're going around um, our circle here. So with this being at 2 pi thirds, well 2 pi thirds is over here in our second quadrant. Um, let's see, this would be now 7 pi 12s, 8 pi 12s, which is then actually equal to, divide top and bottom here by four, this is two pi thirds. Okay, so we're actually gonna be on this angular line and a distance of two out from the origin. So there's our point um, two comma two pi thirds. So what about this point five negative pi fours? Okay, let's do this in purple. So five, that means I'm a distance of five away from the um, origin here, and negative pi fours, Okay, well that's going to be, let's see, pi 12s, um, pi 6 here, that'll be right here. If I'm going, um, if I have this negative theta, that's going to be going um, pi 4s, but in the clockwise direction. So a negative angle is in the clockwise direction, and I'm going out this distance of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we're at negative pi 4s. So there's a lot of lines going on here, but we know that the pi 4 should be halfway okay, in that um, fourth quadrant. Okay, so we have our coordinate 5, negative pi 4. So what about this last one? I have negative 3 pi 6. So this one's a little bit different. Let's do this one in orange. So I have a negative r value. r is negative 3, theta is pi 6. So how does the negative r value um, affect our position? Well, theta equals pi 6, that would be along this line here. Um, and a distance of 3, well, that would be here if it was positive 3. But we actually want to go out um, a distance of negative 3. So I can think about this as like walking backwards. So I have myself standing right here at the origin, facing um, the positive x-axis. I then kind of turn, so I'm at this angle of pi 6, but then instead of walking forward 3 units, I'm going to walk backward 3 units. So let's see, this, this is my pi 6, so this is 1, 2, 3. So that's our um, coordinate, negative 3 comma pi 6. Okay. So now that we have an idea of how to plot some of these polar coordinates, um, we want to look at, um, let's see, this particular note here applies to not having unique representation. We want to look at a little bit of coordinate conversion in terms of how we can go back and forth between rectangular coordinates and polar coordinates. Okay, so coordinate conversion here involves, again, setting up our um, two axes here, the polar axis and the x-axis are the same thing. Okay, and the pole is like the origin. So I think of some point P that I have here. Okay, I can think about getting to that point P by going over x units um, horizontally and y units vertically. I can also think about going to this point some distance r from the origin and having an angle theta here uh, made between this line and my x-axis. So I see I have a triangle here that has um, a side of length x and y, it's a nice right triangle, and a hypotenuse here of length r. So we can see that we get this relationship where x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and we also have that tangent of theta equals y over x. Okay. Um, we can also look at some of our other trig values here. Sine theta would be equal to y over r, and cosine theta would be equal to x over r. Okay. So we can use those 
then to um, convert between rectangular and polar. Okay, so a point with polar coordinates, r comma theta, has Cartesian coordinates, x comma theta, where x will be equal to r cosine theta and y will be equal to r sine theta. Okay, so just taking each of those two and rewriting them. Okay, so what about if we want to go the other direction? A point with Cartesian coordinates, x comma y, has polar coordinates, r comma theta, where r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and we get theta from looking at tan theta. Okay. Now, we know that if we have y over x, um, we could have multiple angles whose tangent is equal to that value, so we have to pick the angle that puts our coordinate in the right quadrant. So we have to pick theta for the appropriate quadrant. Okay, so if we get down to a couple choices, we gotta pick the value that puts us in the quadrant that our point is in. Okay, and so we're just gonna look at two examples of practicing it, doing this, this conversion. So first, let's say I have um, a polar coordinate here, given to me as negative four comma three pi fourths. So that's r equals negative four and theta equals three pi fourths. And I wanna find the Cartesian coordinate. So I'm going to use that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So my r value is negative 4. I have cosine of 3 pi fourths. So I'm going to get my x value is negative 4. Cosine of 3 pi fourths. 3 pi fourths is in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative there. So this is negative um, root 2 over 2. So this will give me a positive two root two for the x coordinate. When I use um, r sine theta to find y, I have negative four sine three pi fourths, which gives me negative four times positive root two over two, since sine is positive in that fourth quadrant. And we know sine of pi fourths is root two over two, so sine of three pi fourths is also root two over two. So this is negative two root two. So our coordinate, then in terms of x and y, whoops, is positive two root two comma negative two root two. Okay, so what about going the other direction? The other direction is where we were gonna have to be careful due to the fact that we don't have uniqueness um, of representation. Let's see, this is negative two root two. Okay, so let's look at this last example. So let's say we wanna find polar coordinates and Specifically, we're asked to find polar coordinates first with r greater than zero of the point with Cartesian coordinates, negative four comma four root three. So this is where x is negative four and y is four root three. And also find polar coordinates with r less than zero. So we're gonna find two polar representations of the same point, just illustrating this non-uniqueness of polar coordinate representations. So we know that r squared will need to equal x squared plus y squared, so we can do r squared equals this negative four squared plus four root three squared. So we'll end up with r squared equals 64, so r is plus or minus eight, okay? So what about theta? Well, we know that tangent theta has to equal four root three over negative four, or negative root three. Okay, and so the question is, well, in what quadrants is tangent negative? So that's in the second and fourth quadrants, okay? Where does um, tangent of theta equal negative root three? Well, that could be at two pi thirds or at five pi thirds. So two pi thirds in the second quadrant, five pi thirds in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so let's try to figure out what combination of these we need for our polar coordinates. 
So we look at what quadrant is our Cartesian coordinate in. So negative 4, 4 root 3. Okay, so that's somewhere over in the second quadrant. So one polar representation when r is greater than 0 would be 8 comma 2 pi thirds because I'd go over here and make this angle of 2 pi thirds with the x-axis and then go out a distance of 8. If I wanted to use r less than 0, I could use negative 8 and 5 pi thirds because I'd make an angle of 5 pi thirds with the horizontal, but then instead of walking in the direction of 5 pi thirds, I'd walk backwards to put me in that second quadrant. So these aren't the only answers. We could have um, several others. If I wanted to just give one other one to illustrate a couple more representations, I could use negative 8, negative pi thirds. Since negative pi thirds would again bring me to the same line in the fourth quadrant, and then I could walk backwards with that negative 8 um, to get to the point that I want. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions on this introduction to polar coordinates.